Line and Score Gates Post Game Show, Maryland over Northwestern, 73-57. Our special guest today is Governor Larry Hogan. Welcome in. Thank you for today's game. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, just talking to the coach after the game, and he said that's the coolest we can play. And, uh, and you know, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it was uh, considering, you know, like, the players were all banged up, but I got a little loud. A couple of guys out there. The players were out of the it's good. Yeah, the last time I saw you, you were all decked up looking like the governor. This time you got your Maryland swag on. You know, uh, I think the Maryland swag is better. Yeah, like, just like a foul on the game. So I got to ask you, since, since we're here, and it's, uh, everything, it's always pulling the season around here, how's the economy doing in Maryland? The economy's doing better than it's been in about two decades. We've uh, gone from last place to the last place. Uh, we've got it about 140,000. That's pretty cool. Not bad, but we're not doing well as a tournament. Maryland was on fire today. We'll be back with intern Mace to be on Turk Talk. Turk Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. We're back here in Xfinity Center as Maryland takes over Northwestern. I'm Wayne Viner, intern Mason. DeMonte Dodd, you haven't gotten any shorter in the last year. Nah, I think I grew some. I don't know. I might I might still be the same height, but everyone keeps saying I look like I grew, so I'm not sure. So. You might have. You're certainly somebody to look up to at this point. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when last uh, we looked you up, you were on a G League team. You still in the league? Well, my last team I was on was on the uh, Boston Celtics G League team, and then I had like a, a little family issue, so I came back home. And it felt me, my family, and my agent felt it was best for me to just relax for the rest of the until summer league starts. So right, right now I'm just working out, getting ready for summer league. Okay. Mason, what do you have here for Demonte today? Well, team's been through a lot of turnover since you left. What do you think of guys like Bruno down low? Um, I think Bruno is really good. Like Bruno brings aggression. Uh, he definitely helped the chirps out a lot. Um, I mean, a lot of people probably don't know he can really he can shoot it. I can tell he can shoot it. Great free throw percentage, and he's just aggressive. Block shots. Uh, it's, it's really fun to watch him play. The energy he brings. He gets the crowd into it. I mean, this is a really fun team to watch, and I hope they can really turn around so they can make a deep run, uh, deep run into the playoffs. See a lot, especially today, of Bruno covering a lot of area. You had that responsibility for a while. How does the center react to covering pretty much from the edge of the three-point line all the way back to the basket? I mean, you really just got to uh, be talking. The more alert, the more you talk, and that's what Coach Turgeon really taught me throughout my years here. Like, the more you talk, I'm... You, the center is the person in the back, and you see everything that's developing and happening. So you have to be able to talk, and with a guy that's athletic and as Bruno and as skilled as he is, I can see it's really easy for him. And you know, the, the more he, uh, the lo more he learned, and Coach Sturgeon mold him into the player. You know, he's going to be even more incredible at blocking shots and and rebounding once he learned just to, you know, be in the right place at the right time. Right. What are your agent and your trainers telling you to work on to be successful in the league? Uh, just being in the best shape of my life, um, be able to knock down the corner three, uh, the mid-range jumper, pick and roll, be able to hit guys in the seams. Uh, that's really all NBA is. You know, if you got a big that can knock down a jumper, roll, catch oops, uh, catch it in the uh, passing in the seams, hit the open uh, guys in the corners, you know, you make a lot of money either in the NBA or overseas. So, you know. It seems like a lot of the guys you played with did make it overseas, so I guess uh, we should be expecting to see you out there at some point? Yes. Uh, after the season, uh, I feel a lot better. You know, like I said, little issue that I went through, but I feel a lot better. And, uh, you know, I'm training now, and I'm ready to get back on the court. Okay, last question. A difference in training for the NBA versus the Kyle Tarp method here? <laughs> Ooh, boy, that's a good question. Uh, I love Kyle. 
and Kyle knows I love him. But the difference is, you know, Kyle's workouts is Kyle works. Kyle workouts get you a lot better. And no doubt about it. But with these workouts here in Maryland, and you have to go to school and all that, it's a lot of wear and tear on your body, mm -hmm. and you're tired. When you're working out, you're ready for the NBA. Yep. I mean, you work out maybe two or three times a day, but you get up, eat, sleep, and play basketball. There's no school, there's no nothing involved. And I mean, our workouts is just as hard as cop one. Okay, maybe not as hard. Okay. But, I mean, they're tough, but. You know, here and there is just, you have school and you have a lot more responsibility. In the NBA, it's like you're just working out and just getting ready for it. And I got you. Got so much time. So. Well, good luck being a professional. I'm sure we'll see you back here in College Park. That's intern Mason. I'm Wayne Viner. DeMonte Dot, thanks for being on Trip Talk as Maryland beats Northwestern this Saturday. Thanks for having me. Special guest Jerome Bernie. You wore number 32 for the Terps while you were here. Played an aggressive center forward position. What's it like rolling back into College Park? Uh, it's been lovely. Uh, it's, 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 it's definitely a different campus from when I was here. Uh, every every year I come back, it's definitely something new to see. Oh, the building here has been incredible. The the number of new facilities, engineering buildings, etc. It's truly one of the top research universities in the country. Uh, what you see defensively from the Terps today? To me, they looked a lot better. Uh, they're definitely aggressive in the passing lanes. I uh, saw a lot of steals. Uh, Bruno did a good job of uh, fronting the uh, block shots. Uh, and then and just basically just staying continuous effort. Uh, you sustain your effort, you know, even when, you know, you draw some fouls and stuff, they'll eventually show in the later, later parts of the game, which right. they definitely did. Right. Robert, you got some stats there. What, what was your big moments of the game? <laughs> we had four players with double figures. Turn had 22. Morsell had 14 points and nine rebounds. Cowan had 16 points and seven rebounds. That's 16 rebounds you wrong from the stars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, number 10. He definitely uh, showed up tonight. Uh, he got a lot of hustle baskets. Pretty much like a, a guard version of Rodman, and you know, getting the putbacks and things of that nature. You know, making just easy baskets. You know, that's what you really want to see. Yes, it definitely, definitely, it, it showed that way. Uh, I know early in the year they definitely had some struggles with the defensive consistency and also putting the ball in the basket, but th those two things didn't look like a problem today. No, they weren't. Uh, Maryland actually played a full game. It, it got a little tight there at the end of the first half, got it back to 14. We were sitting there when it got to seven, and then Maryland put the clamps on them. It was as much the defense as the offense. I think uh, definitely when they moved the ball more, it, it made the offense flow. As you saw when uh, we had some lows on offense, when we basically just stagnated the ball yep. one on one, that's when they got the, uh, that's when they cut our lead down to, I guess, five points. Right. But when it was moving the ball, getting the steals, creating the, maybe doing things defensively and getting to the rack, that's when the lead started to open up for us. It's true. They start in a zone, and at first we were seven for 10 from three. We had eight assists in the first 10 baskets. We are on fire. So when you say you can throw a zone against Maryland's four-guard offense, not today you couldn't. We burned them. No, and it didn't work, and I thought he had a good plan. There's a lot of isolation in the guard. It's like a half guard. Yes, definitely, for sure. Okay, so you came in from Georgia, so you're not a lifelong Terp, but I guess you are now. But who recruited you to come to Maryland? So uh, I was actually talking to my dad about this, and it actually was Gary Williams. So uh, played at Nike All American. I guess he saw me, and then uh, at the time, uh, Moxley, who was here for one year, he uh, came down to Atlanta and he talked to me. You know, pretty much telling me about the Maryland program. Uh -huh. And so uh, yeah, so that pretty much started started off for me right there. All but right. there's also history because when uh, Maryland was in Atlanta, you know, the Indiana, uh, that was probably like you know the first time really like. Right. Well, that was 
a good couple days for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice you decided to join the 2002 National Champions. That was a good move. Well, we thank you for being a Terp. Thanks for being on Terp Talk. Thank you, thank uh, we'll you. be back to wrap this up you, in a you. minute as Maryland rolls over Northwestern today. Last segment here in College Park for today. We'd like to thank Meyer Consulting Engineer of Rockville, and they've been with us the whole time we've been doing these videos. So Maryland getting a little closer to 500 in the league. What's up next for the Terps, Mason? Well, it's probably one of their toughest left on the schedule as they'll head out to Lincoln, Nebraska. Pinnacle Bank Arena always sold out. They've done pretty well this year, 9-4 and four in the league last time I checked, but they are still, according to a lot of people, on the outside looking into the tournament. They've only had one home loss. I think they're 12 or 13 and 1 in Nebraska, so that'll be a tough one. And then Rutgers comes in here. The State University of New Jersey, they haven't done so well this year. Robert, you familiar with them? Well, Rutgers is always going to be one of those tough New Easter teams. And as we saw uh, just recently, St. John's from nowhere beats, beats, beats Duke. And then they come back and have another big win. So you never can count those teams out. Rutgers is always a tough man-to-man -man team. So the Terps are in good position, though, to get themselves back in the hunt. They, they would. So you have Rutgers, then you have Michigan, and then that's it? No, they're at Northwestern well, know, between. home games. Yeah, that's it. And it's hard to believe right now. But Rutgers at the beginning of the Big Ten year looked dangerous. They still got the guys. Maybe they can pull one out. You gotta look, you know, teams that are on losing streaks, they always seem to break them. <laughs> well, yeah, or you'd lose every game you ever <laughs> played. Um, lacrosse did well today, guys. Oh! Yeah, Bruce is over there. We'll hopefully get a report online here soon, but Maryland uh, with it's Bubba Fairman had the hat trick. What was the score when last you looked? Last time I saw it, it was about 8-3 to three Maryland. All right, and I guess uh, some condolences to you, Mr. Stevens. Your friends at Villanova must be sad. They might not be number one. I don't know what happened, but you know, that just goes to show you Villanova doesn't have a shot blocker. They kind of remind me of Duke. They can put a lot of points on the board, but mm -hmm. Duke just does not have a shot blocker. Marvin Bagley doesn't block shots. Okay. He can get you 50. Okay. But he doesn't block shots. And Krzyzewski's going to have to do something about that. So uh, there's a shout out Einhorns who are rooting for Virginia to be number one uh, when the polls come out this weekend. How about that? Wow. It's a shock to me. Uh, you have anything else for today, Mason? No, just got to keep on. Got to go out and steal one on the road now. They do. Maryland does so. Thanks to Robert Stevens. Thank you very Mason. much for having me. Hey, thanks for being on. And our special guests, uh, DeMonte Dodd and Jerome Burney. This is Wayne Viner for Bruce Posner, yeah. signing off from Xfinity Center this afternoon. Go Terps. Maryland rolls over Northwestern. We will see you back here on Saturday night when Rutgers comes in 8 p.m. next Saturday.